So we're going to talk to you guys about using tablets for field data collection. We all collect data um, if we're doing this sort of work. Okay, I'm going to click there. There we go. So just a little background. Some of you maybe have went to Laura's presentation yesterday, but a little bit of background about VWORK, the Bird Watershed Restoration Coalition. We are a multi-stakeholder, public-private coalition working in the Verde Valley, in the um, Verde Watershed, um, trying to improve habitat on a watershed scale by removing invasive plant species. Um, we're treating, we're focusing on four species, um, tamarisk, arundo donuts, olanthus, and uh, Russian olive. Um, we do a lot of community outreach and working with private landowners, and we also are working to provide um, both local veterans and our youth conservation crews um, job skill training and employment opportunities. So we all, like I said, we all collect data. Um, these are the types of data that um, we're collecting as part of our treatment and monitoring program. Um, we, we've all collected data as scientists, and so here's some examples of what it takes for the old school method of collecting data. We have clipboards, pencils, data sheets, batteries, GPSs, but if we go to this modern version of using our technology and using tablets and software, we, um, we're a little lighter in the field. So why switch? Last year um, we were at the Tamaris Coalition. There were several, several presentations um, given to um, us and uh, one of the presentations they talked about the um, using iPads and GIS Pro. We listened to other presentations of using Android tablets and AgTerra software. So Mike White and I, Mike White is from the Southwest Conservation Corps, he's going to be here today. Um, we did some field testing of those two methods, trying to figure out which one would um, suit our needs the best. And we decided to go with uh, using the Android tablets and AgTerra software. And so Mike was able to provide some funding through the Walton Family Foundation that was able to save us um, buy some software and hardware for us, and the Verde Watershed Restoration Coalition take, took the lead in field testing the, this for all of you. Um, we also, so why switch? Um, better quality data. This is just an example, you can see it up here, but I brought it with me, of what we got from our field crews at the end of their um, season, which sometimes is a little hard to decipher. Um, the field crews are able to navigate in the field and see, so we're not printing lots of color maps for them. We have fillable clip, clippable forms, which Hannah will talk about a little later. Um, and there's no, virtually no data entry. There's a little bit of data quality and the cost savings. Um, it costs about a quarter of what it costs to do it the traditional method with spending all that time at the back end doing that data entry, and we're using less paper. So right, I'm going to turn it over to Hannah Farrell, my AmeriCorps intern, and I also wanted to acknowledge that Chris Bertrand, another AmeriCorps member from our coalition that works for the Nature Conservancy, has been very helpful in assisting us um, streamlining this into our um, system. So my portion of this presentation is going to be more of a how-to on um, our procedures and products that we that VWORK has incorporated into our process. So um, the equipment the equipment that we've had to get for collecting field data with tablets is our tablet. We use Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10-inch screen. We went for a little bigger for visibility reasons. Um, we use an external GPS, which when connected to the tablet brings our accuracy down to about five feet, which is awesome. Um, the software products that we've purchased, which I'll go into more detail uh, later. Um, protective cases, because these, are, these tablets are going out in the field, getting dirty, herbicide, fingers touching. Um, and also field charging, right now we've only had to use a car charger, but uh, for backcountry situations we would look into a solar charger. 
So uh, we decided to go with iTerra Technologies software products, uh, which provides data collection and information storing solutions. They specialize in natural resource applications and agriculture. Um, and because we are using these mobile devices, it virtually is supposed to eliminate paperwork and manual data entry. So um, we create customized base maps, which come off of our um, ARC map um, using, an, using a third-party extension in GIS called AGBO TileMaker. Um, so uh, this, is a, this is an AgTerra software called Map It Best, and this is the program that's actually loaded onto the tablets. So this is where the crews are entering their polygons, points, lines, and pictures, and attaching um, associated uh, electronic data forms. So uh, this is an example of a screenshot of what one of our tablets looks like. Um, as you can see, there are, we have all four of our target species uh, on these few properties. And the great thing is you can see, see yourself as a little triangle. You can see yourself walking across property boundaries, walking up to the uh, area you're supposed to treat. And we do, at VWork, have very detailed uh, baseline inventory mapping. So uh, our treatment crews are able to locate um, what species they're supposed to um, be treating. And so another thing that we've been using the tablets for is photo monitoring points, which are automatically uh, geo-referenced. This picture is an example of um, one of our overlooking photo monitoring points. And the great thing is uh, you can have an attached data form to it with specific uh, location details so we also use, in conjunction with Map It Fast, we use Strider Forms, um, which is the, the data form that uh, is attached to a specific treatment or inventory polygon. Um, so we have converted virtually all of our paper forms into uh, these electronic forms. And the two pictures that are up there are this top one shows kind of how um, a crew member would attach their treatment form to a specific polygon that they created. And then the bottom one is our list of different uh, forms that they can choose. So we have a different form for treatment, monitoring, and our baseline inventory mapping. So this, um, the starter forms have minimized errors a lot um, because uh, there's only specific boxes you can check, drop, to, drop down men menus you can use. Um, this picture shows, for example, um, the herbicide choices that our field crews have to use. And there's also hints uh, to, to know which button to click, for example, which species you're treating, whether you're on public or private land. Um, also, there's automatic calculations for stem counts. It'll just add it up for you. Um, and we create these forms in um, Excel. And so you can create them to synchronize with your tabular data in ArcGIS is the uh, purpose of it. So one great thing, this is a picture of one of our co conservation core treatment crew members using our tablets in the field. Is, uh, there's, it's pretty self-explanatory once it's out in the field. Um, easy to train crew members and volunteers for mapping. Basically what our um, crew members are asked to do for mapping or treatment is to, with the tablet, walk around uh, the area that you've treated and you just attach your associated form, that, um, the appropriate form. Um, yeah, and then you can also have photos that are attached to the same project. So, what do I do back in the office? Um, Here's what my screen looks like when I log into um, my Map It Fast online, which is where I can organize projects, um, whether they've been entered into the database or not, and order, organize them by what type of project they are. And the great thing is, once, as soon as our tablets out in the field hit Wi-Fi, it's automatically uploaded onto my, I can see what they've been doing in real time on my uh, computer back in the office. So this is just an example um, of how I can see progress that the crews are making, and this helps with um, instant communication and uh, planning purposes. We can know how far, how much they've treated um, in real time, like I said. 
Um, but, so back here also is where I can export um, as a shape file from the organized projects. Um, and then after I've exported it, I in import this into our database. And the idea is to sync the polygons with um, our existing treatment or mapping or monitoring layers. Um, I did experience some formatting issues in that, um, for example, Strider doesn't allow some sorts of formatting that are required in our database. So that was, um, it didn't allow for perfect synchronization. However, as Anna mentioned, um, my other AmeriCorps intern, Chris Bertrand, has, able, has been able to make a Python script that has filled in the sort of um, gaps where there's not perfect um, syncing. So, um, I mean, this entire process of creating the base maps to field crew protocols, um, to figuring out how to organize this data, and the f fi final product of what a map looks like in my um, database in ArcMap uh, has taken me quite a while to streamline because there are many small steps and subtleties along the way that I've discovered, and the process is still not as perfect as like as perfect and seamless as I can see it becoming. But I am proud to announce that um, by about now, which is the end of our treatment season, um, it, the, it's almost completely computer automated. So it's really um, cut a lot of time out of sitting in front of a computer and manually entering data. Oh, yes, and I use the append tool to um, get our new polygons into the existing layers. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, um, there was some challenges in uh, formatting issues uh, because our database is meant to be able to uh, go into our partner's databases like uh, FAX for the Forest, Forest Service. And so formatting has probably been the biggest issue and also little conversion tools that I didn't re initially realize I needed that I had to figure out along the way. Um, and some of the field issues we have are sun glare. Sometimes I have to crouch under a bush or something to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, battery life has only been an issue maybe twice. And um, sometimes there'll be software upgrades that interfere with our process. But um, one thing I did want to mention about working with Agterra is um, they've had an incredible support team. I call, have called them so many times. I was like a regular at the, um, their office, and uh, they were very willing to help me through any steps I was missing, or, um, you know, one of um, my regular contacts was joking that I should be paid to be a field tester for them, and I was like, okay, you can pay me, I'm an intern, um, but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, they've been very helpful, uh, and, and they realize that each application of their software is going to vary by who's using it. So um, they've definitely helped us tailor to our needs um, for both the making the forms and um, creating custom base maps. All right, just to finish up, um, thanks, Hannah. We um, will be having a webinar. Um, we'll announce it probably on the Tamaris Coalition's connection site and try to get the word out to you. It'll probably happen in April. But it'll be a um, webinar with um, Agterra, and they'll concentrate more on the technical side, and we'll um, concentrate more on the practical side, and we'll have a lot more time to do for you guys to ask questions and um, see what we're doing and how the software works. Thank you. But if, you do, if you do have any questions, I do have one of our tablets with us, and you can come play with it. Tablets with us, and you can come play with it if you would like. <laughs>